Welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another Retro Shiz look back at the past, and we're going more towards the real Ghostbusters for this episode, all the way back to 1986. I was looking through my Kenner Action Toy Guide, of course, and I was thinking, hmm, which Ghostbuster figures have we not looked at yet? And the classic monsters caught my eye, I'm a big fan of a group of toys, a very finite group of toys. Well, hey, you know what? That would be kind of fun. Talk about all six of these ghoulish monsters. So went into my Ghostbusters collection, right? Love these things. And really just to kind of give you a, an overhaul, an overview, if you will, these are kind of sort of loosely based off the Universal Monsters, but with a real Ghostbusters twist. So you have the Wolfman, Monster, the Quasimodo, Monster, the Mummy, Monster. So very loosely associating themselves with the Universal Monsters, but playing heavily on the classic monster trope and then bringing them into the real Ghostbusters lore. So this is going to be fun. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the 1986 The Real Ghostbusters Monsters by Kenner. Let's scare someone. Who can I scare? Scare Ghostbusters. Thank you. Who you got to call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> We're here. So are we. The Frankenstein Dracula monsters. What about me and my mummy? Ah, mummy monsters. Get them, boys. Blast them. What a pinhead. Oh, the Wolfman oh. monster. <laughs> So the real Ghostbusters, ah. each sold separately, new from Kenner. So to start it off, let's check out the Wolfman monster first. A really elegant werewolf figure, very cool tattered clothes, nice blue tie, I always like that on them. Very nicely deco detailed fur on this guy. I really like the sculpt of him. He's monstrous and ferocious, but as you'll kind of see, they're still like a nice version of each monster, but painted nicely, blues, whites, browns, nice teeth, yellow, yellow eyes. He is very cool to have, and he has the gimmick where you squeeze his legs, and he would start to howl at the moon, right? His mouth kind of stays open, and then boom, throws his head back, and he lets loose a monstrous howl. Of course, that's how we used to play with him back in the day, but I really like that his arms move. Yes, it's that old-fashioned squeeze the leg kind of thing, which we will see on many, uh, pretty much all the characters in this wave, but he's just fun. He was a fun figure to have. You could move the legs if you wanted to. Once in this position, you can't make him howl anymore, so they do need to be down, but the mouth, everything, is just, you chase your Ghostbusters around, just a very cool Wolfman figure. Next up is the Quasimodo monster. Nice sculpt on this guy. Boils and he's got the big hump and tattered rags and everything again sculpted nicely. I always remember this guy's shoes, the chain, pretty much not a monster, right? He's kind of, he's not really like a ghost. He's not like a, a monster in that sense or a demon. He's kind of like an unfortunate looking guy. And they just kind of roped him like, hey, you know what? He's a monster. Now, and he does fit in really well with the other monsters, just in terms of his look, but he's just, he's not really a monster. He's just kind of like a poor, unfortunate looking guy, but he's covered in chains. He's all shackled. He squeezes his legs. And of course he does the whole like, oh, free, free, oh, sanctuary kind of thing. So he's cool. He's got like sculpted chest hair. Remember that as a little kid too. I always thought that was hilarious, but you just simply put the chains right back in. They slip in. And basically, you know, his arms spread, and that's what removes the chain from its little hook right there. Very cool, very reminiscent, very, very old school. Same as this Frankenstein monster. The green guy, the very tall Ghostbusters figure, right? Slight imperfections over the years, of course, but he had little patches, little sewn up back of the thing. I love the split. Just nice attention to do, just fun stuff. That was it. Big clod hopper boots. Nice green, ghoulish skin tone on him. Very much like that witch's green, but it fits for this Frankenstein as well. Bit of a shaved head on the side, some hair sort of in the back. Again, love seeing how it's splitting down the middle. That'd be from his arms 
moving forward. He's got stitches on his hand. They they move the bolts from his neck up to the top of his head, just FYI, you know, because you know, universals and all that. But again, squeeze his legs. Now mine over the years, I've done this so many times, you kind of have to activate him a little bit. Just kind of give him, just kind of push his arms just up a little bit. But you can see he roars, he throws his hands up and he lurches forward. And he's just a very cool old Frankenstein figure. <laughs> I'm glad he still works. The amount of times this poor guy dropped or fell off the shelf or I threw him. Yeah, I mean, as a kid, it was just insane. But I, mean, I love the little attention to details, the slices, the dices, everything on him. Next up is the Dracula monster. Blah! <laughs> or you could say, like, I don't say blah, 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 right? That movie. Anyways, this Dracula, again, out of this monster's line, he is very much that figure that always stands out. He was the blue vampire with the purple jacket and the cape, which I did have to get another cape years later. Boy, mine lost the time. Kind of reminiscent of the Batman Kenner cape, right? Same company? Why not? Use the same cape, pretty much. The little piece right here, the original catalog, you know, he had a red version. He also had a red cape, as you can see. But he could put his arms up. You could put his legs up. And he just hits him and he opens his mouth and he does the whole blah 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 he's got some dentrish looking teeth in there he's not scary none, again none of these are scary nicely sculpted details all over them they're supposed to be fun and they're supposed to teach kids be like hey, you know this is like the iconic vampire this is the iconic frankenstein i always like his one closed eye he and quasimodo went for the one-eyed look but again very cool vampire and the zombie, no difference there. He's just, he's the wackadoo zombie. He's not like the walking dead zombie. He's that old school witch doctor jungle kind of zombie. And he is very cool. I love his feet. Always liked it as a kid. One going one way, one going the other way. All the tattered rags and the slices on his back and the missing pieces of his head and the scars. It kind of reminds, you know, like borderline Ninja Turtle type stuff where they used to put every little detail on him but I love the bones the grass leaves the way his little shirt is tied his eyes the teeth one goes up one goes down much like his shoes and his little hair piece that was always cool to see he could fit the Kenner Beetlejuice line as well he's got that goofiness to him but again guess what you squeeze his legs his arm goes up and his eyes go every which way that was a fun one i again this was one of the ones i had most fun with i liked the face on him the teeth you can see parts of his brain or skull but it's just like a hair raising kind of thing kind of like fright features of course for the ghostbusters you could move his legs you could kind of move his arms but it's really just all one piece love this guy which finally brings us to the mummy monster and this guy was the one i didn't have as a kid for whatever reason the kid down the street had him but i never had him until much later he's got all the different bandages all over him he's got an interconnected system so when you do his activation you never lost the pieces which is a nice foreseeable thing that kids were definitely gonna do i remember seeing this guy many times either at a friend's or later at a toy show or something like that always missing something some parts to him but nicely detailed nicely painted and it is nice to see the brown skin of the mummy in between all the different bandages that is cool he's very skeletal you know rotting meat jerky but you squeeze his legs and everything pops off his arm pops off his head unravels basically i love to see all the little bones sticking out of him every which way and the face is classic very sunken very shrunken he is a fun mummy character i love this guy so glad to have him years later and again i can't believe i didn't get him back in the day couldn't have them all but now you can right work and now you can't tell me what i can't buy as an adult ah eh? put his arm right back on there just simply clips in you can still move him around but the leg will ultimately knock it off and the head just slips right on top very cool love his ears too that's an awesome mummy figure as far as these monsters appearing in the real Ghostbusters, not really. Really, you're reaching here to say, like, no one comes to Lupusville where you had the Gregor vampire and he brings the Ghostbusters back to Lupusville and then they fight the werewolves, the werewolves become the vampires, the vampires become the werewolves. That old chestnut. But you can say that this might be the Wolfman as well. He's got the tie, right? He's got the mouth, kind of looks like him. 
we're really reaching here. But just keep in mind, yeah, they kind of sort of showed up, as did others here and there, Frankenstein, in various incarnations, but never this look. Also, I just love that in the commercials, they paired up Frankenstein and Dracula, and then Wolfman and the Toilet got teamed up as well, which they had a missed opportunity for this going on. I remember doing this at the time as a kid. And they were always taller than the Ghostbusters, which made for a good monster figure. So they towered and scared your Ghostbusters, especially Peter Venkman here. When they kind of pair up with the other ghosts, that's where you kind of lose them. They don't exactly fit with the more like eyeballs and the teeth and everything else. They're their own thing individually, but that does make them equally as cool, something different and something very, very retro and special, especially in my collection. So... That's really going to wrap it up, and I'm curious to know if you had these real Ghostbuster figures, or do you have to get them now? Which one was your favorite back in the day? Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything real Ghostbusters, and thank you again for going with me on this trip back to 1986. Those were the days, right? So I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember... Have fun with your toys, regardless if they're scary monsters, ghouls, vampires, zombies, mummies, Quasimodo. God, poor Quasimodo. He just he got the short end of the stick. He's just like, man, it, I'm just I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy. I'm not a monster. I'm just, I'm just a guy. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.